happy Friday. Well, it's been an eventful morning so far. My God. Okay, so I got up this morning and I checked the trap and the trap was shut. There was something in it. What's in there? What's in the box? What's in the box? And I, I couldn't look because it was covered with this camouflage uh, burlap looking stuff. And okay, now in my backyard, I wish I, have, I don't have a picture to show you right now, but I have a section of fence, like fence, you know, a wooden fence, like a picket fence back there. It's not attached to anything. Originally, it was attached to the side of my house going over to where the fence is between my house and the next door neighbor's house. But it, it came down, it was a little wobbly and it fell. And my son and I moved it up and just propped it up against another fence because I'm not quite sure what to do with it yet. And I kind of like not having a fence there. I can get through with the lawnmower a lot easier. Anyway, that section of fence was back there. So he took that section of fence, leaned it up. He has sprayed everything with the anti-human scent stuff. He sprayed the inside with, you know, good smelling female cat stuff and put, you know, food in there leading up into the trap. So I didn't know, I couldn't get the burlap stuff off, so I had to remove that section of fence, get back there, and, and I'm pulling on it like there's something in here. And I get the burlap back, and I'm greeted with this possum face going, <laughs> ah, Jesus, I felt, ah. I felt fell backwards, damn. Good morning to you too, you little bastard. Anyway, he was not happy to see me. And I was not about to start fiddling with this trap to let that joker out. Like, I don't want to take a chance on this asshole biting me. I know they're good to have around. I'm not saying possums are bad. I'm just saying that I am not going to put my hand down near one that's mad. That's what I'm saying. So, anyway, we caught a possum last night. Damn it. And, uh, and, uh, so, the, the trap guy... Sorry, it's coming later to let him out and redo the trap, respray it with the stuff because I handled everything. He said we don't want it to smell like people at all. We want it to smell like a, a female cat that's ready to party, if you know what I mean. We need it to smell like that and, and food, but not people. He's going to come back and redo everything, rebate it, set it up, let the possum out, you know, all that. Um, I did get a call back from my, my the vet for my cats just a minute ago, and and uh, so I explained the situation, and the guy I talked to said, okay, the vet here said if you want to catch, if you want to trap a feral cat, here's what you do, and apparently the vet swears by this. I've never heard this before. She said, go to Bojangles and get a, a piece of chicken, like a chicken leg put that in there. She said it works every time. That's what he said, the vet said. Use a, Bojang a Bojangles chicken leg. Put it in there. Take up all the other food so the cat has nothing else to eat. I don't have any food back there at all. My neighbor's cats are just going to have to go somewhere else. <laughs> go home to eat, you poor little kitties. I don't think they get fed well at home. And they're, they're, they're doing a lot better. Their coat is a lot shinier and softer. And Nobu's growing. I think he's a young cat. He's gotten quite a bit bigger since he started coming around. Like, just he's, he's a good, I think he's gonna be a good sized cat. But they come, Nobu and Wallix come over and eat every day. Wallix came around first thing this morning and Wally wasn't out there. So I fed Wallix. Wallix is a, another orange, sort of an orange cat, but a different looking. It, it, it's not related to Wiley. It's like a British short hair cat that's kind of a beige color, an orangish beige color. She's pretty, but she's very skittish. She came around, so I, I, I fed her, and as soon as she left, I brought the food back inside. Nobu came around, but he didn't want to eat. I put the food out for him, but he didn't eat any of it, which is unusual for him. But, you know, I, um, I just, when he left, I just brought it back inside, so there's no food out there at all. I'm not sure what time the guy's coming to reset the trap, but he said he would get out there as soon as possible to redo it and let the possum out. Um, I also got a call from the painters. I was supposed to have my house painted. They're coming Monday and Tuesday. 
well, they just called me and wanted to know if they could come this afternoon. I said, yeah, I'm on my way to Virginia. I said, I, I don't know that I'm going to be there this afternoon. So, you know, I'm sorry, but I don't think I'm going to be there. Because some of the painting, I'm having them do painting inside as well. I think they wanted to start with that. But I'm not, I, I don't want to guarantee that I'm going to be there. I'm not sure what time I'm going to get back. So I didn't want to have to rush back, you know. Because I want to make a video of the produce place while I'm up there. And I don't want to be rushed, you know. So, but I do have to get back later to pick up my son from school. He has a, an extracurricular thing at school on certain days. And I think they're doing it today. He said he wasn't sure, but he'd let me know. So, um, anyway, I don't know. They, they did ask if they could come tomorrow and, and do some painting. I said, that's fine, I guess. I'm, I don't know, though, looking at the weather, I don't know that I'd want to start tomorrow. Um, it's not. Now, next week, the weather looks really good. That's why they wanted to do it Monday and Tuesday, because it's going to be up in, the weather's going to be up in the 60s Monday and Tuesday. No rain in sight. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect, they said, to do the outside. And the inside's not going to take very long. I have a little bit of touch-up I want them to do in the kitchen. You see, after they replaced the countertop up in the bathroom and the sinks, a water, a little water spot appeared up in the corner in my kitchen, you know, down right below that. I had some of the, the restoration people come out and look at it, and they said, well, really, with a leak like that, because your shower's right there, too. About the only way to tell where it's coming from is to bust open the ceiling and get up in there and look around because of the way everything is configured up in your bathroom we can't tell for sure whether it's your shower leaking or the sink it could be either one well they said just keep an eye on that water spot it could be just a, a fluke you know whenever they were swapping out your faucet a little bit of water leaked out let us know if it changes and I've been watching that water spot now for over a month and it hasn't changed at all it's the exact same size doesn't look any different so I'm gonna go ahead and have them paint you know paint it touch it up make it you know get rid of that water spot paint over it and there's a wall part of the wall in the dining room the paint is chipping away like the, the so it, it got, they said it looks like it might have gotten wet, and I swear to God, if it was Paradise Home Improvement, because it's that back wall, I don't know. They're going to sand it away, buff, you know, get all the cracked stuff off of there, fill it in, and repaint it. So they have some chips of, of the paint, so they have a color. It's a really pretty kind of an eggplant color. It's a beautiful color. But they have some chips so they can match the color. They're going to fix the wall you know, fill it in and then paint it. So that'll take a little longer, I'm sure. But I have to get everything away from that wall and that's where my big rack of DVDs and Blu-rays is. I'm gonna have to get all those down, which I need to do anyway. I've been meaning to pull all those down and dust them all. You know, the best way to do it is just get them down and, and dust them. And, but they're alphabetized. So I gotta make sure I put them in stacks so that I can just, you know, whoop, put them back up there and they're still alphabetized. I don't want them to get out of order because alphabetizing those things was a bitch. Not really, but it kind of felt like it was. It was fun though. I kind of enjoyed alphabetizing all those, all those movies. A lot of people, I've had people kind of scoff, like, why do you have, you know, DVDs? You know, why don't you just get them, you know, get an elect, a digital copy, an electronic copy, whatever, because, you know, you don't own that. If you read the fine print, they can just yoink that away from you at any point. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, they can also edit that movie. They can take stuff out. They can change stuff. If you like the original version of that movie, you may not have it available to you in five years. You may not have it available to you in a year. You may not have it available at all. They may just decide, you know what? We don't think you need to watch this movie at all. We're just going to remove it. Sorry. Tough break. No, you don't get a refund. We're just going to not make it available anymore. We don't even have to tell you why. We just take it away. But if you have a Blu-ray or a DVD of it, they can't change it. They can't amend it or whatever. And they can't take it away. That's why I have them. So if you like movies... 
if there's a certain movie you like, I would recommend getting a hard copy of it. I'm just saying, I mean, you know, wouldn't be the first time it happened. So, if you like the movie the way it is, you might want to get a hard copy of it. That's why I have so many on DVD. So, and I will, I will not change my habit on that. Same with music. If you like music, you might want to have some hard copies of that as well. Even if you just burn them on a CD, old-fashioned style. Yet, I have a bunch of CDs and they're in the car. They're in my trunk in a in a case thing. Because um, I listen to them in the car sometimes. Yeah. You never know when that might not be available anymore for any number of reasons. I hate this exit. So, I was greeted by a possum first thing this morning. That's the first time I've been up close with one in a while. Back when I used to live in another part of Greensboro, this was back, oh my God, 12, 13 years ago. There was one that would come around and I had food out that I put out again, kind of similar situation for like, there were a couple of cats that would come around, you know. And the possum would eat their food and this possum was not afraid of anything. You open the door and go, excuse me, and it looks up, up at you like, what the hell do you want? Go away. And it just keeps eating. It doesn't care. And it was huge. She was a big possum. And you, you, you poke at it with a broom, and it's like, piss off, lady. I'm trying to eat. Just stop it. It wasn't going anywhere. It would hiss at you and then just go back to eating. And they chew with their mouth open. It's so gross. They're so noisy. Blech. They're good for the environment, blah, blah, blah. They eat like ticks or something. I don't know. They can't get rabies. You don't have to worry about that. That's pretty cool. So I'm not saying they need to go away. I just I just don't want them around my my front door, but if you put out food, you're going to end up with a possum or two, or a raccoon, or both, you know, raccoons with their weird little hands. <laughs> There's a funny video on YouTube of, of this, and I, you might have seen it, and there, this, guy, this guy does a voiceover for this video where this raccoon comes up, and, like, and these cats are eating. It's really funny. I, I'll see if I can find a link for it and put it in the description. If I think about it after I get back from this trip, I'll try to remember to do it. Where he walks up and, the, and he, he's talking like a rac... I think the title of the video is like Raccoon at a Barbecue or something like that. It is so funny. Oh my God. <laughs> where this raccoon walks up and it, it just... At the end, it just scoops up a handful of cat food in its front paws and then runs off on its back legs. It is the funniest thing. Like, damn. That is such a raccoon thing to do. I've dealt with a lot of raccoons because we have a lot of them around here. And they, they are resourceful. They are smart, too. Oh, my Lord, they're smart. They are problem solvers. Let me, I, they are. Little trash pandas, man. They're smart. We had, um, when Glenda the Good Witch and I were still married, he was, he's my, Jesus, yellow truck. Okay. You don't have to intimidate me, you big angry banana. When Glenda the Good Witch, Glenda the Good Witch is my third ex-husband. I have three ex-husbands, y'all. I put all my skeletons out there, so if anybody wants to expose any, they're too late. I've already done it. You're not going to tell people anything they don't know third ex-husband. My current ex-husband and my current significant other. It's complicated. Alright. We're still together. We just can't live under the same roof with kids. It's, it's a whole thing. Anyway, when we were still married, there was this raccoon that kept getting into the trash. Like he had, you know, we had trash cans in, you know, behind the house back there. There was like a brick patio back there. The trash cans were back there. They had lids on them. They did. The, tra the, the, the trash panda, the raccoon, figured out how to get the lids off the trash cans. And these were the kind of lids that were supposed to be raccoon proof. They even, because we bought them for that reason, because the raccoon kept getting in the other cans that we had. We had these metal trash cans and it would get in there and get the food out. You know, dig, there'd be just trash all over the backyard. He'd just sling it everywhere. Um, so we got these, um, 
other big plastic trash cans with these lids that would lock. And they were supposed to be raccoon or varmint proof. Like nothing can get in. Bullshit, that raccoon got in them the first night. Got in both of them. Got both of them open the first night. Like a challenge. Like we would wake up the next morning. It's like, yeah, bitch. Try again, sucker. And had trash all over the backyard. So, we tried putting a bungee cords on them. Like, it had these hooks, like these locks on the tops of the lids. So, we even took a bungee cord and, like, you know, put them together. That worked. But the funny thing was, okay, so the, the raccoon could not pop the locks open to get the lid off. This damn thing was smart. But what it did do, and I cannot believe this... The raccoons were dragging the trash cans across the backyard like it thought maybe if I pull it it'll open. It, it dragged those every morning you go back there and look and they were they'd be way off in the corner of the backyard somewhere like he was trying to drag it home. Just zing. I'm not looking at y'all in case you're worried. I'm not looking at y'all. I'm, I'm paying attention because it's treacherous with all these people. These trucks and angry drivers. So, it would drag the trash can. So, you'd have to go get the trash can and carry it back up. And, <laughs> and it did that for weeks. Every night for weeks. And we'd have to go get the trash. But it didn't get the lids off anymore. The bungee cords seemed to work. But it kept dragging them around the backyard. Like, don't, don't, can't you go try one of the other neighbor's trash cans? Why are you so obsessed with these? Maybe we just had tastier trash. I don't know. But it was hilarious. We fought a battle with that raccoon for weeks. I don't know if he's still dealing with it or not. <laughs> God, it was something. It was a battle of the battle of the minds between humans and a raccoon. We, we barely won, which didn't make me feel too good about my smarts. Lord, we almost got outsmarted by a raccoon. Isn't that something? So, yeah, they're smart. And they are like my squirrel proof bird feeders in the backyard from the control Yankee. I bought these two bird feeders like 60 some dollars a piece. Well, one of them I got as a birthday present, the other one, and I liked it, so I bought one just like it. And it was like 60 some dollars for this bird feeder. Squirrel proof, 100% squirrel proof. Bullshit, it's not squirrel proof either. You know what they do? They hang from they hang from the bottom of the feeder. I have I have several squirrels in my backyard that do this. They jump up, and I tried to put it up high enough where they couldn't get to it, but they could still jump up there. They jump up from the ground. Whoop! They flip in midair. I've seen them do it. It's nuts. Whoop! Like Neo from damn Matrix or something. Like what are you doing, you little ninja squirrel? So it, it grabs onto the bottom of the feeder. It takes sometimes it takes a couple tries because they got to get it just right. And they grab the little things with their front feet. And sometimes they hang. Sometimes they hold on with their back feet. And they take their little squirrel arm and they put it up in there where the food comes out. And they just rake the food out on the ground. And once they get all they want, they fall, they go back down to the ground and eat it. And they'll do that all day long. They'll empty that bird feeder in two days. I have to keep running them off. I just, I yell, I open the back door and I yell at them and they, they fall down and run away. They just come right back though. They, they don't care. I'll be back. Yeah, they always come back. Uh, squirrels are problem solvers too. There, there are a lot of really entertaining videos on YouTube of people who set up obstacle courses for squirrels. To, you know, for them to get the treat, they have to figure out all these puzzles and, and stuff and it's, it's crazy to watch it's really interesting so I'm headed up here to take the cake to my dad I actually remembered to put the cake in the car I have an eBay package to mail I, I wanted to mention something about mail and and I, I I am so sorry about this but this is the way it is um, I've had several people ask for my address because they want to mail me something um, I learned the hard way that I cannot give out my post office box publicly. When I first got my post office box, I put it out publicly, and let's just say I will not be doing that again because people will send you stuff you never wanted to see, and I'm going to leave it at that. Whatever
whatever you're thinking, it was probably worse. I will never, ever, 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 ever do that again. Like, ever. I was traumatized. I will never give it out publicly again. Unfortunately, I don't even want to put it in the comments section in, on this little channel here. I, I don't because people, dear God, people are sick. That's all I'm going to say. So, unfortunately, I don't have a way to give you my address. I don't like to give people my address until I talk to them. I don't really have a way to do that anymore. And I, I don't, I had to do away with my Facebook page because people got mad that I didn't answer them fast enough. Because I would get, you know, I get, I don't know, at least a, a dozen to 20 messages a day, seven days a week on that Facebook page. And they get backed up pretty easily if you don't answer them every day, which I don't have time to do. The people would get mad and it was just becoming a problem and it was taking up too much of my time every day to deal with that page so I just shut it down you know I'm sorry it, it's just me here I, I don't have time to do it um, I don't check Instagram I don't look at it every now and then I'll post a picture or something I don't do other than that I do absolutely nothing with Instagram I it doesn't interest me you know I don't do anything with TikTok. It doesn't interest me. I think TikTok is like junk food for your brain. I think it's bad for you. I think it's bad for your attention span. I don't think children should be watching it at all because it is literally rewiring their brains to have no attention span. It is not, I mean, think about it. Do you, do you, uh, do you know any young children today? Do you think they could sit through two-hour movie and just sit and watch the movie. I, I know a lot of kids that could not. I, I, honestly, I, I don't think they could because they don't have the attention span for it. They don't. And I think TikTok is terrible for children. I don't, I'm not talking about like, con, I don't know what the content is, but as far as the, the constant, it's like if you saw the movie Idiocracy, you know, when Frito was sitting there watching TV, the way the way the screen is, he's watching like 20 things at once and all these flashing lights and the border is flashing and he's watching Owl My Balls. That's basically TikTok. And you see what kind of, you know, you see what he, you know, he's just a, a, a complete idiot. I mean, he's just, you know, well, everybody's an idiot, in, you know, in the future. Everybody is really, really stupid. <laughs> headed that way, I swear. It's not going to take 500 years to get there either. But I, I don't do it anyway. I don't do anything with TikTok. If you like TikTok, that's great. I think it's I think it's bad for you. I don't watch it. I don't have it. I don't do anything with it. Um, anymore, I don't do a whole lot of stuff like that. Not as much as I used to. I don't care about Twitter. I don't do anything with Twitter. I don't care. I haven't messed with Twitter in years. Like, whatever. Um, yeah. So, anyway, I don't, and I don't have, I don't give out an email address or anything like that. I just, I'm sorry. You know, I really am. But then what I tell people, though, what I, and I, and I mean this, seriously. If you want to thank me, if you want to show your appreciation, just go do something nice for somebody today. You know, go hold open a door for somebody or pick up a piece of trash and put it in a trash can. That would mean just as much to me, honestly, if you would just do a good thing today. That would mean just as much to me, honestly, because we need more of that in the world. And, and if everybody would just do a little bit, it would make such a difference. You know, if you see somebody who needs help, if you can, you know, help them. Whatever, whatever you can do. I mean, that, that would mean just as much. It really would. I, I don't need anything. I'm good. You, if you could help somebody else out, that would, that would be really awesome. You don't have to, you don't have to send me a thing. You really, I appreciate the thought. I really do. You don't have to do a thing for me. That would be enough for me. If you would just do something, do a, do a good deed today for somebody or, you know, for the environment, you know, get pick some trash up or something. That'd mean just as much. So, 
yeah but I, I don't give out my post office box um, unless I've talked to the person and I at least have I can I can be fairly certain they're not going to traumatize me with what they send me yeah but you know I, I just don't trust people I mean it's nothing personal I just I'm very cynical and jaded and I just don't trust So, but I do appreciate the thought. I really do. But I don't give out my, my post office box anymore. I, I don't. Um, I'm sorry. I, I can't. I, I don't. I can't. Um, so, I, I'm, I keep meaning to say something about that, and I keep forgetting to. But I'm going to get back to driving. Oh, the roads are getting a little hillier, and the traffic is spread out now. So, that's good. I don't know why I'm so tired. <sighs> so anyway, hopefully he'll the, the guy will come by and get the blossom out of the trap and get it reset and get everything fixed back. Because I messed it up trying to pull the the burlap stuff back to see what was in it. I meant I messed it up. So he's gonna have to respray it with the anti-human smell stuff and rebate it and redo everything. Hopefully he'll get out there while I'm gone and do that. So, and I guess tonight when I get home, I got to get all those DVDs off the rack, get the rack away from the wall, and get it all ready for them to do what they got to do to that wall back there. Um, wasn't planning on having to do that tonight, but I guess that's what I'm doing. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. Um, and we're gonna get Wally. If, uh, if if the critter guy is not able to get him, I will try the vet's suggestion with the Bojangles chicken leg. I'll try that. I've never heard that, but she said take up all the food. You know, talk to your neighbors. You know, tell them not to leave any food out. And she swears by it. According to the guy from the vet that called me, she, he said she swears by it. A chicken leg, a, like just a, fried, just a fried chicken leg. That's all you got to do. Just put it in there they'll go for it every time like really a I wouldn't think they would but a, I don't know but she swears by it she said it works so if you're trying to catch a cat try that oh, shit I don't know but it has to be from Bojangles is what she said you have to go get it there I don't know if it's something in the seasoning or I don't know but it's something about it they really like it if this guy can't get it we will try the chicken leg thing We'll see if we can get him that way. Or am I just going to keep catching the same possum over and over? <laughs> After a while, he'll just get used to it. Well, I get stuck in here, but I get to eat. So, it's a win for me. And then I hiss at that lady and she lets me out. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm coming up on Pilot Mountain. Well, yes, I am. Well, I can see it. I mean, it's still a ways off, but I can see it. In the Andy Griffith show, it was known as Mount Pilot, but the, the actual town is Pilot Mountain. See, Andy Griffith grew up here in Mount Airy, Mayberry, Mount Airy. Yeah, he grew up there. And uh, not to disparage, you know, not to talk ill about the dead, but I heard that in life he was actually kind of an asshole. I never met him, but the guy who used to cut Andy Griffith's hair when he was a boy, he, I, he, uh, he was still working when my older son was little, and I have a picture of my son getting a haircut from Andy Griffith's barber, former old barber. Still in the same barber shop where Andy Griffith got his haircut. And I've eaten the, the pork chop, what is it, the pork chop biscuit, pork chop sandwich at uh, Snappy Lunch. I've had that. It's really good. And the guy that does, uh, the, does the Barney Fife impression gate came around and <laughs> he gave me a ticket for eating too fast <laughs> oh my god so if you go back and listen to old recordings of andy griffith talking back when he used to do his routine like the one about football what it was was football he sounds a lot like my dad he really does <laughs> he does he sounds a lot like my dad so, anyway he's he's dead now so but I heard in real life he was kind of a... I heard uh, Frances Bobbier, the one that played Aunt B, I heard she was not very nice either. And that those two didn't get along. They didn't like each other. I don't know if that's true. But I heard they didn't really get along. Anyway, I'm going to go. And, uh, yeah, happy Friday 
to you and hopefully we'll get Wally at some point. And uh, I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a good weekend coming.